so when I ended this last stitch, um, I didn't have enough thread left on my needle to actually make little seeding stitches like I normally would uh, to actually hold it down. But I just came up in the cloud here and I'm going to start my next thread next door to it and put in the seeding stitches because this area is going to be covered in sort of greys and whites and bluey greens anyway. And I can either just catch that with my current seeding stitches or I could just leave it because all the stitches going up and down here would actually hold it in anyway. So I've come to here and this square is hidden by the cloud. Now you could just stitch underneath it if you like or just walk across to the next up angle just by putting in a couple of little seeding stitches in the cloud and that just keeps the tension for the last stitch but also holds it for the following stitch as well. So that's my kind of top tip. When you're walking around your linen just put a seeding stitch on the way to the next area and you can use up your wools without having to cast off and cast on again. So that is nearly the whole of the first colour. Hang on one minute Richard. Oh, nearly there and then you can either put in the little seeding stitches to finish off or along the edge or in the cloud. So just a couple of little stitches and then out the top and then I'm just going to snip off that end and the knot and any little bits that are hanging around and now I'm going to start the second direction and just stay in the same colour again a great big long thread and this direction actually I marked out by counting the ridges in your linen and this is a really useful thing when you're working thread tension later on when you do long and short soft shading all sorts of stitches you can judge the size of them by actually counting the bumps there so I could either start at the bottom and work up or at the top and work down but just to demonstrate um, where we're going with this area I'm going to actually go against nature and start in the bottom area because you're just working the two different angles of the laid work so I'm just starting with these three little seeding stitches on the edge some people do something called a pin stitch, which is working one way and then you work back into it. But the trouble with that is, with crawl work, it makes a rather hard little stitch. And the uh, point about the wool is you actually want to be able to stitch through your previous stitches. So I'm coming up at the end of a line that you can probably barely see, but I marked them every seven ridges along here. So I came up here at the edge and now I'm going to go down in the lower corner of this square that we're making and then come up in the bottom of there. And this is really absorbing, you know, this looks very straightforward when I'm showing it to you now, but actually when you're doing this at home, it's it's a really pleasing thing to do. And you'll notice that my I'm not, I'm not pulling hard because if you pull it too hard, you start gathering the fabric. Um, and, but this stitch in particular does really does need a frame. Now, if you haven't got access to a frame, the stitch we're going to do next, the uh, cool outline or cool stem stitch on the clouds is actually perfectly suitable as well and would be also be historically accurate uh, thing to do in cool work, which would be rather nice. So you could actually get stitch up these lines in the same way, all of one direction, then all of the other direction in cool stem or any sort of chain or linear, linear type of stitch. I don't usually use chain stitch very much because um, there was a fashion for timber work, which worked. It was around the same time as much cool work and it's often mistaken one for the other. And um, using the needle was always much, much uh, more expensive and in a way more skilled, I think. But, oh, I can hear next door opening their garage door. That's handy in the middle of filming. <laughs> so, as you can see, these are not quite perfect because I'm kind of at a weird angle to, um, to you because the camera has to see. 
But when I actually couch these areas, I'm going to show you when I couch them, which I've been doing here, you actually correct the squares by um, making the couching tidy up your stitches. So I'm going to exchange this one now for uh, this one. And I'm going to show you this, if you don't mind seeing this, Richard, if you can get there. Um, and I've got a double thread here and it's folded over and threaded with the loop at the far end, which I show you in many, many videos on YouTube. And all you do to cast on with a double thread, go down with the needle, come up through the loop, pull that tight and pop your needle down. And again, I'm casting on in the cloud shape because we're going to cover that later. Now, all you do is you get a piece of paper and you see the line that goes up and divides these squares in half. Now you can mark this out in pencil first if you'd like to, or in a cotton thread or whatever, but you know, it's a little bit of trial and error to see what pleases your eye. You can make a tiny little stitch over it or um, do as I'm doing and I'm making stitches about half an inch, perhaps half a centimeter long. And again, these do not need to be perfect. Nobody is going to get a measuring tape out and look at your Christmas stocking and say, do you know what, you could have done that better. They're just going to be so thrilled that you were thinking of them and um, that you wanted to make it just for them. And the main thing with this is to get them finished. And I'm making three. So I challenge you, Richard, we need another one with a dinosaur on. So don't ask me to learn the piano, but I think that you could possibly um, stitch this if I draw it out for you. Or are you going to draw it as well? 